much for joining us for the election inspector training today. We value your dedication to ensure that we facilitate a successful election for Orion Township. We really do appreciate all of you. This is a great service to your community. We have catered this training to be more hands-on and deviated from the online training provided by the county. We gathered some feedback from our election workers uh, back in March, and we decided that a more engaging and hands-on training method was definitely necessary. In the packet that you received, you'll notice that it is an order from stations one through five. I will be presenting station three before station two to line up with the timing for our breakout sessions today. I do ask that we take all questions at the very end of the training. This allows for time to ensure that we get through everything, and if it's something that I mentioned in the training, your question will be answered. So please do hold all of your questions until the end. So on election day, those of you who will be working a full day or a morning shift only should report at 545 at your assigned precinct location. Those of you that are working a half day and only in the afternoon should report at 1.30 at your assigned precinct location. If you are unable to work on election day, um, please do contact me as soon as possible. I am working on polishing up the schedule and getting some things finalized. So if there's a change in your plans or you're not available or you need to work a different shift, please let me know as soon as possible. That way it allows me time to make the adjustment. So on election day, we do ask that you come prepared to bring your own meals with you. Meals are not provided to the precincts. Some locations may or may not have a kitchen, coffee pot, or a make microwave to prepare your meals. Please be sure that you are prepared if these resources are not available to you. You may also check with your chairman ahead of time to see if they are familiar with what is available. As far as um, dressing, we do ask that you dress in layers because temperatures may vary in the precinct. Um, it may run a little cooler or a little warmer depending on where you're working or the time of day. So just be sure that you come prepared so that you're, that you're comfortable for the course of the day. Uh, voter registration receipts may be brought to the precinct if voters have registered in the clerk's office on election day. So this means that maybe they were not registered before and um, they decided on election day they wanted to come and register. So when they register the day of, they do need to come into the clerk's office and do that. And then they will be issued a registration receipt, which they will come into the precinct and provide um, to the workers. Uh, be sure also for those of you that are planning to work, um, especially if you're planning to work a full day, I want to be very clear that you will not be able to leave your precinct on election day. So be sure that you apply for your absent voter ballot. Um, that way you can plan ahead and make sure that you get that taken care of ahead of time. Um, if you plan to work half a day, you can you know, work the half a day in your precinct and then go vote in your precinct if you do plan to vote in person. But just please keep in mind that if you plan to work a full day, we will need you to um, plan ahead and vote AV. So in the precinct, um, the election inspectors, be sure that your name badge is visible to all of the voters in the precinct. Um, chairman, you will administer the oath to all of the workers after turning on the equipment because it does take several minutes for everything to power up. Co-chairs, uh, be sure that your election inspectors are signing the oath of election inspectors on the first page, signing the certificate of election inspectors on the inside cover of the last page of the poll book, and also signing the payroll sheet and writing their start time. Also, don't forget to ensure that they fill in what time they leave for the day. Um, just another note that co-chairs should ensure that all inspectors have signed everywhere in the poll book. Um, be sure that this is especially done for AM and PM workers. And for those that are just working in the morning, 
um, before they leave for the day, we should be sure that all signatures are captured. That way we don't have to call anybody back to come and sign something, um, especially when we, if we notice it at the end of the night or if they notice it at the county, they will give you a phone call and ask you to come down to the county and sign the paperwork. And we try to avoid that. Um, we do want to be sure that the payroll sheet is also complete to ensure that everybody gets paid. At 7 a.m., the chairman will announce that the polls are open. Once each election inspector is assigned to a station, they should have all the necessary materials to set up their, their station. If something is missing, notify the chairman immediately. We will review the supplies and go over further instructions needed for each station in the following slides. One special note, um, voters with disabilities may be unable to mark their own ballots. There are several options on the voter assist terminal, such as headphones, a sip and puff device, or use of a tactical switch. If the voter requires assistance, be sure that this person is not the voter's employer, agent of the employer, or an office or agent of a union. The voter has the option of bringing a family member to assist them with marking their ballot. The individual who assisted the voter should also be recorded in the remarks section of the electronic poll book. So if you're running the electronic poll book, be sure that you're making a special note of who assisted the voter with um, voting their ballot if assistance is needed. If the voter requests assistance from election inspectors, you will need two inspectors from different political parties to assist the voter. Be sure, if that's the case, the election inspector is not providing suggestions on how the voter should vote or influence the voter in any way. Voters are able to have a minor child in the voting booth with them. On election morning, a no campaigning sign will be placed 100 feet from the entry of the polling place. Campaigners are prohibited from posting, displaying, or distributing any election-related material within 100 feet of the polling entrance. Election inspectors should be aware of voters wearing any campaign attire, such as buttons, hats, and t-shirts in the precinct. If a voter is spotted wearing campaign material, they should be asked to take it out, of their, out to their vehicle. We're gonna go over station one. I do want to make a special note that in your packets, it is labeled station one through five. Um, we do only really have three stations, but this is broken up a little bit more. Um, so all of the information in your packet is all the same. It just may be a little confusing when you see one through five when really we only have one through three. So I want to make a special note of that. Station one materials will include pens and applications to vote where the election inspector will add the date and the precinct number. For this election, you will note if an absent voter is surrendering their ballot and requesting a new one or choosing to vote their AV ballot in the precinct. This will be recorded in the top right portion of the application to vote. So you all received a copy of the application to vote in your packets this morning. Um, it should be um, just a small application to vote size. I'm not sure if that's maybe bigger, maybe a four by six or something along those lines, but you'll see in the top right corner that it asks you to check mark whether the voter is surrendering their AV ballot or, um, or choosing to vote their AV ballot in the precinct. These are our acceptable forms of ID in the precinct. Don't worry, we're not going to quiz you on these and make sure that you have them all memorized. Um, there's no need to verify the voter's address or the signature. The ID is only used to confirm the voter's identity. As election inspectors, you should verify the voter's name and the date of birth. Those are the two key pieces of information that you really want to pay attention to. And also be cognizant of juniors and seniors with the same last name. If that means that you're paying special close attention to the date of birth and the middle name as well, um, those are some identifying characteristics to differentiate between the two of them. Voters should complete side one of the application to vote. If they have no ID, the voter can fill out the affidavit of identity on the flip side of the application to vote. 
If they refuse to produce an ID, do not issue a ballot. So the difference is here, if a voter comes in and they say, well, I left my ID at home, I don't have it with me, they can fill out the flip side of the application to vote, indicating that they are who they say they are and they are not in possession of the ID. If the voter says, well, yes, I have my ID with me, but I'm not going to show it to you, you should not issue that voter a ballot. Does that make sense? On photo IDs, be sure to not compare all physical traits as they can change. It may be an old photo. I still have mine from a while ago. I looked pretty young. <laughs> the address may be different on the ID or what is written on the application to vote. So be sure that if the addresses don't match, that's okay. Um, addresses can change and it, it may just not be updated on the information you have in front of you. When closing the polls at eight o'clock, remove all of the applications to vote from the station one table. So we wanna be sure that nothing is left behind. All of the applications to vote are picked up and one should be handed out to every person who is in line at eight o'clock. So let's say it's eight o'clock, you've got a line of 10 people that still wanna come in and vote. Each and every one of them should receive a copy of the application to vote to fill out because they were in line. Um, do not close the polls until you've been directed by the chairman and all the voters have tabulated their ballot. The precinct doors should remain unlocked for observation during the closing process. So if there's a poll watcher or somebody who's interested in coming in to observe the closing of the polls, we should have the doors open and unlocked, um, available for them to come in and observe if they choose to. In the black supply pin, you're gonna add all of the pens and the unused applications to vote and the ballot marking demonstration pads. Do not bring the black bin back to the municipal complex at the end of the night. Um, it will be picked up by the delivery crew after election day. So when the chairman and co-chair come back at the end of the night to go over all of their um, materials and their ballot summary and things like that, you don't have to bring the black bin back with you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started going over the electronic poll book. There will be some slides in this section where I don't go into detail due to the multiple steps needed to complete the task. You don't have to memorize them. All of the information is in your packets that were distributed to you earlier. So you will have that as a reference point on election day and they will also be copies in the precincts as well if you don't have yours with you. Um, but feel free to read it over ahead of time just to familiarize yourself a little bit, but you are not expected to memorize these steps. So when opening the polls, you're going to have some materials available to you if you're working the electronic poll book. You'll plug the surge protector in and plug the power cord to the computer and the surge protector. The mouse and the barcode scanner will be um, plugged into ports on either the left or right side of the electronic poll book laptop. So generally it's on the right hand side, but there may be some extra ports on the left hand side that you can also utilize. You will then turn on the laptop. You will insert a flash drive after it's up and running. The flash drive is just something small like this. It's like a thumb drive, flash drive, whichever nomenclature you like to use for this. And it will be labeled with your precinct number. So if you're in precinct two, it'll say precinct two. You know you'll have laptop two, which also coordinates with it. But this is what you plug into the right side of the laptop on election day after the machine is powered up. And this you wanna be sure that it stays plugged in all day. After plugging that in, you're gonna receive a message that says unlock drive D, and it'll show up in the lower right-hand portion of the laptop. The chairman will provide the password sign-in information to you in order to get in. 
the electronic poll book worker and the ballot station two worker kind of work hand in hand. The ballot number and voter number are the same in the electronic poll book and the application to vote. So those two workers are constantly communicating back and forth all day to be sure that they're both recording the same information on the application to vote and the electronic poll book. And this is kind of more of a checks and balance process. Um, do not unplug this flash drive from your laptop or you may need to sign back in. You'll be doing backups on the laptop throughout the day and the backup will not save and it will not complete unless you are signed in with your flash drive here, which is also called a bit locker. So you may see the term bit locker, flash drive, something along those lines. Um, but you do need to make sure that you're signed in. And if you're not sure if you're signed in, you can always unplug it, plug it back in, and sign in. When you log into the electronic poll book, you'll see a large gray box to sign in with the credentials. You'll enter the password encryption, username, and password that are all provided by the chairman. So the first thing you do once you sign into the electronic poll book is you're going to do your first backup of the day, and that's very important. You'll select File, Backup, the two dots, select Kingston D, Save, Backup, and OK. Backups are performed about once an hour after that. You'll see something that'll remind you in the lower right corner of the screen. It'll say backup overdue and it'll be flashing in red. So you will have to do a backup before that goes away. So it is kind of a little reminder of you to let you know to back up the information. But remember, you do need to be sure that the BitLocker is signed into. It does time out after a while. I don't know what the time frame is, but it does time out. So you want to be sure that you are signed into it. And again, if you're not sure if you are, simply unplug it, plug it back in, and then enter in the sign-in credentials. So this is more of a basic overview of the electronic poll book layout. Um, there's a more in-depth training that is separate from this training um, it is not required, but if you do want to be considered for operating the electronic poll book on election day, we do have everybody take it. Um, you may not need to take it before every election if you work every election, um, maybe at least once a year. So if you, for example, took it back in February, but you weren't available to take it last week when we had it, um, I would still consider you to be proficient in the electronic poll book that it's fresh enough in your mind because you used it not so long ago. So there's three sections for the electronic poll book. Under voter search is where you will either type in the voter's name, usually last name first, or you can scan the back of their ID with the barcode reader. And that's what is going to be used to populate um, their name. The voter details section in the middle, um, that has the registration information, um, if they have a different ballot style, and it will also indicate their polling location. The list of voters to the far right is a recording of all the voters' names, the voter number, and the ballot number. When assigning a ballot, you can scan the voter's ID and verify the information on the application to vote to the e-poll book. You will select the ballot type to issue and enter the next available ballot number. So remember, the ballots are going in lowest to highest order number. So, so you'll start with the ballot that's on top and you'll assign that one to the voter. The election inspectors will complete the election inspector completes section of the application to vote. They will issue the ballot in a secrecy sleeve. And you can verify in three places if the ballot was processed in the electronic poll book. You can check in the voter search section. You can check the voting status and under the list of voters. Um, those will all tell you if the ballot was issued. The ballot number will also be indicated in the list of voters and the voter number. 
the voter has an option to bring their AV ballot in the precinct for tabulation. So you're gonna follow the instructions in the following steps in the slides if this happens. If a voter brings their AV ballot to the election day polling place and wishes to tabulate it, they're gonna fill out an application to vote just like normal. They still have to fill out the application when they come in. After the voter verifies their photo ID or signs the affidavit of voter not in possession of ID, you're gonna take the following steps. You'll search for the voter's name in the electronic poll book. You'll select lock this voter record and you will ask the voter to expose only the numbered stub of their AV ballot and confirm that the number on the stub matches the number in the absentee ballot sent status flag in the voter's e-poll book record. So the, um, the long secrecy sleeves that we have are what is given to the voter if they decide to tabulate their own AV ballot because if they bring their own ballot into the precinct that was already issued to them, we collect their envelope, their secrecy envelope. They won't need any of those materials any longer because they're not mailing them back into us. They're not putting them in the drop box. So we wanna be sure that we're still issuing a secrecy sleeve, number one. They come up to the electronic poll book worker, they want to tabulate their own ballot, you will issue one of the longer secrecy sleeves and we'll go over that towards the end. I'm gonna show you all what that looks like. And then once they get their ballot secured in there, they can then turn over the rest of their absent voter materials to you, which will go in the absent voter envelope. Does that make sense? So anything extra that they have that they won't be using in the precinct, you can collect that from the voter. Please note that if the voter's AV ballot is missing a stub, or if the stub is detached, or the ballot number does not match, the voter should surrender the ballot and be given a new ballot by the election inspector. If the voter surrenders their AV ballot, the clerk should be contacted to reject this voter's absentee ballot in QBF. Once the ballot number is verified, you'll select voter tabulated AV and confirm that you want to continue to issue this ballot. And um, up on the screen here, you'll just see an example of um, what this will look like under the voter search. These voters are located within the selected inner precincts. You'll see next to the voter's name, um, which is blued out right there, but it says AV to ED. AV is absent voter to election day. So they are converting from being an absent voter to an election day voter. If they are surrendering their ballots, um, if the voter decides to do that, um, they will vote a regular in-person ballot. The election inspector will follow the procedure and the AV ballot processed again by the election inspectors and when processing the AV ballot delivered to the precinct by the clerk, if recording voters in the e-poll book as opposed to the AV list, instead clerk delivered AV button, which we, we don't really work too much with that because we do not process absent voter ballots in the precinct. So there's a difference. So some jurisdictions do absent voter processing in each of the designated precincts. We don't do that. We have an absent voter counting board that actually tabulates those ballots here on election day. So we treat this like a precinct. Um, so you won't have teams bringing in ballots um, to your precinct to tabulate that were already returned. Does that make sense? So we still do AV processing in the precinct when the voter brings it in, but you won't have a big um, stack of them delivered from the clerk's office. And then this screen right here just shows um, the confirmation that you're recording an absent voter ballot processed in the precinct by the election inspector. Um, this is the ballot number that's issued. 
And then after selecting OK, the voter will then appear under the list of voters. Um, do pay attention to red question marks next to the voter's name. I'm not going to go over all of the status flags, but these are just some examples of what you might see, um, especially if it indicates something like absent voters sent and received by the clerk, which means the voter has already voted their ballot and they've sent it in and we've received it at the clerk's office. If you see something like that, um, you would call the clerk's office because we're not issuing another ballot to that voter since it's already been received by the clerk's office. Now, if the voter wants to spoil that one, they have the option to do so, but you do need to have the chairman call the clerk's office. And then these are just another couple examples of voters with status flags. So if you see a red question mark next to somebody's name, it's, it's wanting to give you um, an idea to, to collect some more information from the voter. So if the voter chooses to spoil their ballot, um, they can do that as many times as they like. They will write spoiled at the top and remove the ballot stub. After the ballot is spoiled, a regular ballot process can be used to issue a new ballot. Um, be sure again that we are updating the application to vote and the information in the electronic poll book of the change. Um, you do wanna verify that the voter is in the correct precinct. So for example, on the screen here, um, you're going to see this precinct, other, and unlisted. So all of the voters in, let's say you're working in precinct three, they will be listed under this precinct tab. You will only see voters in precinct three who are assigned to that precinct to be able to vote their ballot in that precinct. If the voter does not show up in that list, they are probably in the wrong precinct. And you can double check that by selecting the other tab. If you select other, you will see all of the registered voters in Orion Township. So for example, let's say John Smith populates in the other tab and he comes into precinct three and he said, well, I would like a ballot, I wanna vote and you can't find him under this precinct, but then you click on other and you see his name, you can then go under the voter details screen and you'll see the precinct location he should be reporting to. So if he's supposed to be in precinct six, you can direct him to precinct six. Also at station one, you'll see maps and you will also see a QR code where the voter can use their cell phone to scan the QR code to see where their designated precinct in as well. But they cannot vote if they, if they are not in that pre, if they're not in the correct precinct, we can't issue a ballot to them. You have to direct them to their designated precinct. And if they are not in either of those, that means that the voter is not registered to vote there is the unlisted tab where you will add the voter's information. They'll provide their registration receipt to the e-poll book worker. E-poll book worker does not find them under this precinct or other. They go in the unlisted tab and select new and they will add the voter's information in there. So, and the reason that they don't populate is because they just registered to vote that day and I download the electronic poll book information all the night before. So if, if they weren't registered prior to that, then um, that's why they don't show up. Um, if a challenge ballot is issued, um, be sure that the number is written on the ballot and concealed with a piece of paper and the electronic poll book election inspector will document that in the remarks in the electronic poll book and the chairman will document that in the poll book itself. If any change or correction is made, you'll enter the remark immediately. Um, please do not wait and come back to it later. When entering a voter remark, any time a deserted ballot is left behind in the voting booth, it can be tied back to the voter um, by the ballot number and you will go under voter remarks enter the remark and okay. 
When rejecting a ballot, if it's exposed or if there's a missing stub or ballot number is different than the application to vote, if it's left in the booth or not tabulated, you'll record that as a remark um, if, if it is rejected. This is some instructions for the um, defective ballots to follow. Nothing to memorize there. Be sure, again, that you stay active in the e-poll book to avoid having it timed out because that will time out as well. There may be times when the polls are quiet and maybe you don't have a lot of voters. Um, if it times out, you can sign back in with the username and password. The encryption should not be needed again. For closing the polls, be sure that you're saving the data once more to the flash drive after the last voter has been processed. And these are some um, this, these are some slides that you will follow for um, recording the converting the AV to in-person tabulation ballot summary. After you're entering the ballot summary information, you'll select preview and follow the steps on this page. You'll save the list of voters to the flash drive when closing the polls, and the chairman will record the number of voters in the paper poll book as well. You'll pull a um, remarks report. Um, that is in the e-poll book under general remarks or voter remarks. And you will only see anything listed on the report if a remark was made. Voter history report will update the voter registration files in the QVF. And that also records who voted on election day. Um, verify that all of the files have been saved to the BitLocker. And the voter history report also, um, that is a little bit different and that will not appear with the ballot summary remarks or the list of voters because it's a zip file. So you'll see that one will look a little bit different. So one thing that I do want to be sure to address is that you take note of different ballot styles. For example, back in February, we had two different ballot styles. Um, some, two of our precincts, we actually had more ballot styles because we had um, proposals for the different school districts, for the Pontiac School District, and then for the Rochester School District. And then we also had the Democratic um, ballot and the Republican style ballot. So those are two different ballot styles. So, the really cool thing about the August election is we only have one ballot style. So that avoids a little bit of confusion. Um, but do take notice moving forward that there may be more than one ballot style in your precinct. Um, secrecy folders should contain instructions for the voter on the front uh, regard marking their ballot. So they'll be able to um, go through that if they need further direction. Double check the ballot numbers for each ballot style on the ballots that are delivered to the precinct. They must match what is recorded on the receipt for election supplies, ballots, and tabulator. Give the receipt to the chairman who will sign it and place it in the clerk's envelope. You do want to remind voters to stay in their lane and not split their ticket by voting in more than one party. This risks the chance of their ballot being rejected by the tabulator. Be sure that a mismarked ballot is spoiled and a new ballot is issued. If a voter marks their ballot in error, they should report to station two and request a new ballot. The spoiled ballot should have spoiled written across it. It should be folded and placed in the spoiled ballot envelope. Station two um, will cross out the old ballot number on the application to vote and they will issue a new ballot. So be sure that any time that adjustment is made, you're marking it on the application to vote. And it will also be recorded in the electronic poll book if you happen to be working on the laptop that day. Ensure that the ballots are kept in numerical order, starting with the lowest number on top. Any unused ballots should be should remain in the blue ballot bag until needed. Double check the completion of the application to vote. Record the ballot number and the voter number on the application. 
So you're going to direct voters to vote their ballot at a private booth. Do not let them start marking their ballot in a public area where their ballot is visible to others in the precinct. Station two, the electronic poll book worker and the ballot worker, they kind of work hand in hand throughout the day. They're constantly comparing the application to vote and the electronic poll book have the same issued ballot number and voter number. So for example, the person working the electronic poll book will say, okay, we are issuing ballot number 103. They record 103 in the electronic poll book. That is communicated to the ballot issuing worker sitting next to them with the application to vote. They're recording 103, so they're doing a constant checks and balance to make sure they're recording the same number in both, so to avoid confusion. You're going to wait for the chairman to prompt you before starting the closing process. Pens and goldenrod ballot marking demonstration pads are placed in the black supply bin. You'll gather the secrecy sleeves from station five and bundle them. They will be placed in the black supply bin. So on election night, returned in the blue ballot bag are any unvoted ballots, voted ballots, and spoiled ballots or defective, or original ballots for duplicates. If there are contents inside the envelopes, indicate on the front and seal the envelope. If no contents are inside, indicate none on the front and do not seal the envelope. Confirm the spoiled or defective ballot envelope count with station two prior to sealing the envelope. This number is recorded on the ballot summary. Confirm that the voter assist terminal ballot count with station four and the count at the bottom of the vet are the same. My apologies, station two. The voter assist terminal ballot storage envelope will be all non-voted ballots that were issued to accessible voters. The local clerk's envelope will include the AV envelope for all AV envelopes and AV ballots for voters who converted from absent voter to election day. The provisional ballot envelopes should be included in the white clerk's envelope as well. Those come back to the clerk because the voter has six days to rectify, um, you know, showing their ID to the clerk, verifying they are who they say they are. So the clerk has to be in possession of that provisional ballot envelope for each voter. everybody, my name is Julia and I'm the records and FOIA coordinator in the clerk's office. This is Tanum, our accounting controller, and she is going to, and she's in the clerk's office also, and she is going to help me with setting up the table and lifting that onto the table. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to show you is, I'm going to let if we each hold aside. There is a locking mechanism on the underside here that you'll use to lock that to the table. So when this is assembled, make sure that this is on the bottom, <laughs> okay, underneath, not on top. All right. And it's easiest to assemble this, uh, let's see, I think we found that it was easier to do it this way. And then leave it all like this. And we've got A and B on the legs. They can't see them. They're back oh, there. oh, yeah. yep. <laughs> okay. We got A and B going right? Nope. Nope, you told me you had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. Yes. Okay, so there, you want to snap that in. It's hard to see upside down, I tell you. Okay, and I've got the blue. Red to red. Okay, excellent. All right, there we go. And I'm going to let you...
turn it, so make sure the latch is on the front part. This is the latch. Yep, that locking mechanism it's that we talked about. Oh, and I forgot to, let's see, let's rotate this around. When I talk about the red power button and the blue pole worker button on the back, um, once it's on here, it's too unwieldy to turn around. So those buttons are back here, on, on here, okay? So now we're gonna lift that. There are feet on here that snap into place. And the locking mechanism. Is it in? Okay, so now this isn't coming off. The next thing you want to do is on your front of your poll book, um, there are the serial numbers for the machines, same as the tabulator, and you want to match that up and make sure that that is correct. It matches what's in the book. If not, call the clerk's office. <laughs> All right. There's also, uh, later on when you open the machine, there will be another number to check, and that is on the seal for the V drive, which is the brains of this. And you don't want to remove this. You just want to check the number at this time. All right? So the next thing we're going to do is get the printer going. So I'm going to get my uh, stuff here. So you have a USB cord that connects from the printer to the VAT, and then you've got your power cord. Now, when you get started, don't plug in this right away. We'll be doing that a little bit later, okay? And actually, because we haven't taken the cord out yet. But you want to start up the printer. The on button is down here, it's recessed. It's in the very bottom top right, or bottom right of the printer when you're facing it. Now you want to open this up and extend this for the paper. The extender and the paper, and by the way, the legs and everything are in that big black case along with the privacy shields. So you are going to set that in there. And I'm sorry, did I say the VAT paper was also in there? This is the same weight as the ballot. And you're just going to put this in here so it is ready to go to print your test ballot. Okay, so. Now I'm going to unlock the case over here. We have this all color-coded with the keys. So this is yellow here. Let me do it this way. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. You put this away and we didn't lock it. Okay, pretend that we're unlocking it. All right. And let me drop this on the floor. There we go. All right. Now, when I mentioned the power cords, they are behind this. Be very careful that we don't break the clips. There are two parts here that you plug in together, and then you'll plug that into the power strip. All right. And this actually doesn't need to be unlocked to access it. Now, next, you want to press down on this va uh, vase, <laughs> brace, <laughs> and, and you heard it snap, and that's to keep this all sturdy so it doesn't close on somebody. Use your orange key. We're going to take out the tablet here. There is a lock symbol and an unlock symbol here. We're going to go ahead and unlock this. And then there's a tab that you can rotate here to release this. Lift it out, it's kind of heavy. And seat it in here and rock it back. 
and lock it in place. And again, make sure it's good. All right. So now you want to go ahead and plug it in. So ours is already plugged in. And we are going to print the test ballot. To do that, first of all, you need to power it on, OK? Um, which, did I say that already? It needs about 15 minutes to power up, just like the tabulator. You want to hit the blue poll worker button. And that's, you don't need to enter a code yet at that time. So what that does is it allows you to access this little hamburger menu at the very top of the screen. You want to press that. Okay, you don't want to print anything yet on, in the directions here. Okay, then it says run tests. Hit run tests. And then you want to print the laser test page. So I'm going to select that, wait a couple minutes, and this is going to print. So you should hear that. No, nope, it's making noise, so it's made the connection. And that's the whole reason that we do a print test ballot, is you want to make sure your connections are working and everything's working. So if a, somebody comes to use the machine, it's all set to go, and you know it's going to work for them. All right, so your Verity ballot printer test page looks like this. It doesn't actually print out a ballot, okay? This just confirms that it's hooked up correctly. Then you want to take this and fold it up and put it in the white clerk return envelope for the end of the night. Okay, after you do that, I'm not going to do the next part other than we need to exit the testing. So that's a exit, exit, and you're back to print zero report. So then you just follow your directions, print your zero report, open the polls, that's where you'll be required to put in the code, and that code you get from the chairperson. They have an envelope that has the codes for the tabulator, the e-poll book, which is the laptop, and the VAT. So that's where you get those codes. So then you just follow the steps for opening the polls. Uh, Paper is going to print out that you'll need to sign. And uh, you're ready to go if somebody wants to use it. Now, as far as uh, how it works with a voter, they might come in and say that they want to use this machine and anyone can use it. They don't have to, you know, have a reason. They can just go ahead and use it. So how that works is you take the next available ballot, you put the ballot number and the voter number on the application. That's all the same as usual. Then you are going to go ahead and remove the stub off of that ballot. Then you take that ballot itself and it's going to go in the VAT ballot storage envelope. I have to make sure I get that word incorrect. <laughs> and then that, that comes back to the office. Um, because the reason is this is a big pencil and it's going to print out their ballot after they make their selections on the screen and work their way through. Right, we print the test page instead. Yes, yeah, so the previous equipment that we had for this, um, would a we would actually go through and it would fill in all the ovals just to make sure that that worked. So it's just a, it's a different machine, different method. Do we have to have a member of each party watch? No. This? No, no, you don't want to be around when they're using it. Because they're going to go through and on the screen, or through the headphones, or using this. And by the way, the headphones go into this on the controller. Um, there are covers for the headphones, by the way. If they use a SIP puff device, they will have their own. You know, that's not something that we'd provide. That's a personal hygienic thing. 
Um, so anyway, when they're done voting and they, their ballot prints out, then they just go on like they normally do with the ballot. Only this way they're going to just turn in the stub to the person who takes the stub off normally and then they'll just go ahead and go to the machine and insert the ballot. And then at the end of the night, you're going to be closing the polls. Again, that'll need the code. And after you've gone through all the steps, you're just going to hit the red power button and carefully put everything away, especially those cords. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the closing, opening and closing of the polls. Those steps are all outlined in your book there. So what I want to do is a little more show and tell, show you what's going to go on uh, once the voter has completed their ballot. All right, so that's where we're going to pick up in the process. Uh, once the voter completes their ballot, they're going to head over to the tabulation station. They're going to stop at the desk where somebody's going to take the tab off the top of this ballot and they're going to put it in this really fancy brown paper bag. <laughs> And that's where the, the ballot stub will go. Um, at the same time, they'll remove the voter app to vote, take that out, and put it on a spindle. All right? The, the apps go on here by, uh, in order of voter number, not ballot number. All right? This is a precinct, uh, primary uh, election we're having. I guarantee you're going to have people that are going to need two or three ballots to get it right to get their vote to count. So uh, if, if you got one of those and they keep having to go back, hold any of the other voters that process quicker, hold them off, and then make sure that you're keeping this count by voter number. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And then last but not least, gosh, make sure you offer an I voted sticker. I've seen people come back from the parking lot because they didn't get their I voted sticker when they, they left, okay? So that's what happens at that station. The last responsibility of the person at that station, tell us, uh, um, Instruct your voter to go over to the tabulator and slide the ballot in and let the uh, uh, machine take it uh, out of the sleeve, okay? I don't know if everybody knows that's why those little notches are in your secrecy sleeve. That's so that you can easily move that up. It's easier this way. Easily move that ballot up and down, all right? So that's, that's why those notches are in there. So once you've done that, the person will move on to the tabulator, all right? Now to make you familiar with the tabulator, um, the first thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up the tab tabulator, or not to guess, it doesn't have to be the first thing. One of the first things you're going to do when you're setting up the tabulator, though, is find your privacy wings. These privacy wings will be delivered to the precinct in the big black bag that uh, holds the, the uh, voter assist terminal um, table. Okay? There'll be four wings in there, two for the voter assist unit, two for the tabulator unit. I don't know if you can all see it in the back, but there are two little slots on either side of the tabulator. These things are spring-loaded and they just drop into those slots and just like that you've got your, your wings on your tabulator. Okay, so that's how you set those up. Um, the other thing is when you get your materials at the pre in the precinct, you'll have your clerk's um, poll book, which is going to ask you to verify... What did I do here? Which will ask you to verify the serial number Well, I'll be darned. It's never happened before. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, which will ask you to verify the serial number to make sure this is the tabulator that you're supposed to have. Your serial number is located right on the front. I don't know if everybody can see that all right, but your serial number is on the front. Front, Just verify that that's, this is the tabulator for your precinct. There will also be blue seals that have this entire unit all sealed up. Make sure that those are the right seals too, that nobody's tampered with the tabulator from the night, be, between the night before when it was delivered and that morning when we all get there, all right? On the back of this unit, you'll see one more seal. This seal should never be taken off, all right? Unless, the, for some reason, you can't get into the front door of this unit. That's the only time that this would come off. Otherwise, that stays there all day long and you send it back with that exact same seal on there, okay? Only used in the case of an emergency. Speaking of emergencies, should for some reason that your tabulator won't take ballots, um, gosh, I hope that doesn't ever happen. It's never happened before, but when I say that, um, there's an emergency slot in front here. For some reason, if your 
uh, a tabulator won't take ballots. The ballots go into the emergency ballot recept receptor. All right, as you see, it's just a little flap on the front there. That's where they go. If, say, it's because of a power loss, but the power comes back on, you do not, do not open up your ballot box and start counting those. The only when these get counted is at the end of the night, after everybody has voted, after all the voters have left the building, that's when you open this up and then you put them, put them through the, into the, ta the tabulator, okay? So that's only used in case of emergency. Again, hopefully you never have to use that information, okay? Questions on that so far? Yes? The um, blue locks that are on that. The seals, yep. The seals. Yep. We don't have to check for it to make sure that it's empty and then reseal it with a new blue lock? Uh, I think the seal comes on it already. Right. Uh, you're going to cut that off and then you're going to reseal. Right. Yes, That's yes, I yes. Okay. okay. So, and speaking of locks, and seals, uh, your co-chair or chairperson will have a set of keys. Notice that they're color-coded. Uh, I or my co-chair always have, the, have these on our possession at all times, but they're color-coded. So you see there's a yellow dot on the, on the tabulator. That means those locks are operated by the yellow key. See a green tab down here? That means that's operated by the green key. Slide that key in there, turn it and open it up. Here's your ballot bag if you have to use the emergency slot, that's where they're all going to be held so they don't get mixed in with the ballots that went through the tabulator already. So that's what that bag is for. All right. The other thing when you first open this up in the morning, you're going to find a big blue printer bag in there. Inside of there will be the printer for the VAT machine as well as paper and uh, materials for, for the VAT. All right. That'll come shipped inside. But you check it out, make sure that there's no ballots in there. Once you've done that, you're able to close this back up and put a seal on it so it's sealed for the day. Questions on that? Nope. Next one. Yeah. You, yep. That'll be in your instructions. Correct. Next thing you want to do, op open up the um, the tabulator. This the lock is a two-part lock. So you flip the front down and then you lift the bottom up, and that's how you unlock it. It's kind of like some luggage that I've seen before. So um, when you're locking it up. We'll flip these forward, then snap them into place, and then now you'll notice the bottom ones won't come up. So it's two-piece, okay? When you lift the lid, make sure you snap it into place here. This top is very heavy. You don't want to have that drop on anybody. It'll hurt some fingers. Question? Show us how to take the screen out, because that's always... Oh, yep, yep. I'm coming, co coming to that. Yep. Thanks. Um, so that's how we open it up. Now inside, you'll notice a couple more stickers. There's an orange sticker up here. There's a green sticker down, down here that I'm sure you can't see in the back. But with the green key, pop that in into the um, compartment that's here in the front. And this is where your V drive will be. This is where the thumb drive will be. It's not in here today because it's not election day, but on election day, there'll be a, this will be connected to a thumb drive. That's where all the information is stored from that goes through the tabulator. At the end of the night, you're going to pull that off and you're going to put that in a, a pink anti-static bag. And you do not break the seal on what he's showing you. There is a seal on those as they're going out of the precincts on election day. The only person that should touch that is your chair or your co-chair. So leave that intact. Okay. Orange. It does not lock the, the, these pa this panel here. The panel is always unlocked. Oops. And it's just for cords. All right. So these are the cords to um, get power for your tabulator. Obviously, this one gets plugged into an outlet or an extension cord. This one is con connected to the control box. And then the last one is plugged in in the back of the machine. I don't know how many of you can see it, but there's three round sides to this plug and one flat side. The flat side always goes up, okay? And that flat side, let me drop this back down. The flat side, or that plug, will go into the black circle in the, in the very middle of the back of the machine. I don't know, again, I don't know, can't get everybody in here to see it closely, but that's where it goes, okay? On either side, I, um, on either side, Yes, on either side of that, you'll see a red button. That's your power button. So when you power up, that's the button you use. When you power down, that's the button you use. 
when you go to close the polls or do any other kind of actions, it'll, in your instructions, it'll say push the blue poll worker button. That's the blue poll, bu bu poll worker button and where it's located. Okay, so that's all, all of your, your buttons from the back side. Back to the front, all right? Orange key, orange key operates the tablet. And so punt, pop the orange th key in and turn the key. It's, there's two locks. One is the, the, the manual lock over here on the side, then you've got this lock. Once you turn that key, now you can pull the tablet out. You see the tablet into the, the tab tabulator, you lean it back and you lock it back into place. Tablet can't come out now. Okay, it's locked into place. Nobody can walk up and take the tablet and run out the door with it. It's locked into place. All right, same thing at the end of the night. Unlock it, lift it up, drop it back in, manually hold it in place, and lock it. Okay, when it comes to putting cords away, um, for some reason this tends to be a challenge. But the, black, uh, the easiest thing I've found is take the black box and drop that in the very first, first thing you do and then drop the cords for that around it, all right? And on top, instead of trying to wrap it into a figure eight and things like that that I've seen, just wrap it into a small circle. If you wrap it into a small circle, it should fit in there very easily, all right? The, the door here has a couple of tabs. Take that ta those tabs, line them up. and it'll snap right into place. Don't try to force it, don't try to jam it. We've had people snap off the, these and then we've got to order replacement parts. So um, it should go in there very easily if you just use that process. Um, questions, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, um, let me see how I'm doing on time. Oh, I forgot to push the start button. Okay, <laughs> all right, well let's just go. So. so so, that, so that's, that's the tabulator. From that point, now the per person's ready to vote. They drop their, put their tablet, um, their ballot in there. We'll have so, uh, someone stationed near the, the tabulator, all right? Uh, you're the exit person. Um, you can't be within 10 feet, and you can't have visual, uh, be able to see the, the, the screen when the, ballot, when the voter um, votes. But what you can do is you can hear a bell when it goes off. And if a bell goes off, a flag will pop up and the voter's good to go. So if you're the exit person, just ask the voter, do you see a flag? And if they do, thank them for voting, they're on their way. If they don't, if the ballot comes back out, there's three main messages that will show up on this board. So you ask your voter, what does the screen say? Most commonly, especially in a primary, it's gonna say they overvoted or they crossed party lines. Okay, at that point, you tell the voter you have a choice. You can either revote, we'll, we'll, we'll spoil your ballot, and you can revote. And if they choose that, take them to the front of the line. Don't make them go to the back of the line. They've already done their time in line. Take them right up to the EP poll book and explain to the people at the table, we need to spoil this ballot and issue a new one. Okay, they can take care of that. Um, or they can say, Cast it as is. If they cast as is, what's going to happen is that the column where the least amount of votes were placed is going to be eliminated. Okay? Um, and so that's, that's, and that's, that's their as is vote. Okay? Second thing that will happen, uh, and I haven't seen this, but a lot of people have told me they have, somebody wants to cast a blank ballot. All right? That's going to kick it out and say there's a blank, it's a blank ballot. Um, voter has, again, has a choice. They can say cast as is because what they want to do is they want a protest vote. I don't like any of these candidates and they want a blank ballot cast in their name. Okay, that's fine, they're welcome to do that. Um, and so they'll, they'll just choose as is. Or if they say, oh, I, I must have missed the square, maybe that's why it registers blank, they can go back and remark the ballot. That's their two choices there. Last thing that usually comes across is that it did not scan, it got kicked back out. That's usually because they tried to push it in or uh, you know, push it in too hard. Let the, let the machine take the ballot. I've seen sometimes it takes five, six tries, but it will take it if they're just patient and slide it through. Questions on any of that? Rod? So if they're having trouble getting into the Yeah. Still stay 10 feet away yeah, yeah, you, you, you cannot see their ballot and you really have to let them, you know, work at it. And just again, 
Um, have them just inch it in there slowly and move it up very slowly and let the machine take it out of their sleeve. Can you have them put it back in the sleeve and then you can approach the machine to see what it says? Mm, yeah, I, 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 I would say no. no. Okay. Just let them have them read, that, read the, machine, the screen to you. Question over here? I uh, no, I, that's got to be done up front. Penny correct for writing candidates ahead of time. Writing candidate in, and you have to fill in the um, oval or the square. But right now, there's no valid write-ins. We haven't received that from the county at this point. There may be some valid write-ins, but we haven't got that yet. But you cannot instruct the voter who the valid write-ins are because you would basically be campaigning for that candidate. So they need to know if they have a candidate in mind that they do that on the write-in area and they fill in the, the square or oval next to it. Bottom line, write-in uh, candidates have to be pre-approved by the county, correct? They have so to. that's exactly right. So and was there another question here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so 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 if they just say take it as is if they've you know, voted uh, 12 votes for one, one party and one vote for the other party, that one party is not going to be counted. It's, it's an, that's how it's an as is. If you go back and forth in a, in a primary election, the whole entire partisan section is not valid. That's why you have to instruct people when they're coming in to get their application filled out and to have their ballot issued that this is a, an election, it's a primary election, and they must stay in their lane. Vote all Democrat, vote all Republican, or vote either, but they can't flip back and forth. Yep. Otherwise, it will invalidate that. It won't accept it. It'll, it'll say you have um, crossed over, and it's up to the voter to determine if they want to have it go in the tag later. Or it comes back, they spoil that ballot, go up to the front of the line, and get a new ballot issued. That's why it's so important that you remain 10 feet away from this machine at all times. Because if you happen to touch a button for them that says, go ahead and tabulate as voted, you voted their ballot. And we really shouldn't be near that if they can read. Then and if they can't and they need the assistance of an election inspector, your chairman will bring a Republican and a Democrat to make sure that that is handled with both parties represented. Okay. Uh, last piece of advice I'd have for you, too, is as when you're doing these things, do it two people opening call, polls, closing polls, two people, one from each party, have one person read and one person take the action. And if possible, have those same two people do the work in the morning, who did the work in the morning, do it in the evening, okay? Even the simple things like taking signs out, oftentimes we're working in the dark, all right? There shouldn't be in August, but you know, the two people who walked out and put out the 100 foot signs, have two people, first of all, have two people go together so nobody's out there in the dark by themselves. And then secondly, have those same two people, if possible, because I know it's half-day workers, it's not always possible, have those same two people go get them because they know where they place the signs, all right? Um, same thing here. If you had two people um, doing this, try to have the same two people take it apart. Um, same thing, supply bin. You got two people who are taking out the pens and putting up all those things. They know where those supplies came from. Have them work together to put it away. to return to the clerk's office at the end of the night. Um, this section will help understand how to make, how the materials come back to us and what can stay behind at the precinct on election night. At the end of the night, in the local clerk envelope, it's a large white envelope, you will be sure to include the applications to vote. You will have your payroll sheet, um, Co-chairs, again, be sure everybody has signed this. We need all AM and PM workers to record their hours. The hourly precinct checklist, um, be sure to compare the number of applications to vote and the number in the e-poll book and the number on the tabulator to ensure that they all match. A good way to do this is to checks and balances throughout the day and recognize the discrepancies early on. Um, I believe this should be done about once an hour. The receipt for election supplies, ballots, and keys 
be sure that this is completely filled out and signed. Any notes for the clerk, um, anything the clerk should know can be notated on note cards or sticky notes provided. The totals tape from the Verity scan, uh, co-chairs, again, please be sure that everybody is signing this. All of your election inspectors should have their signature on there. Um, the e -poll book laptop, um, that should be brought back in the laptop bag with all of the supplies kept together. If applicable, any affidavits of absent voter, um, change of address or voter cancellations, surrendered absent voter ballots, those should all be returned. Um, to return in the white clerk's envelope, the provisional ballot envelope, um, be sure that any voted ballots, secrecy sleeve, state of Michigan provisional ballot form, voter registration forms are also included in there. The green chairman bag, which will include the poll list, election keys, the blue sealed transfer bag, which will have the following items, um, envelopes for uh, the county clerk, the Board of Canvassers and the local clerk. And also the three flash drives should be enclosed in the pink anti-static bag for the VAT terminal, the tabulator, and the e -poll book flash drive. You can omit the provisional ballot return envelope as part of the returns in the tra uh, transfer bag because that does come back in the white clerk's envelope. Just to reiterate, the blue ballot container, it's on wheels, it's probably about this big, it has an extendable handle. Um, you will have all of your unvoted ballots, voted ballots, envelopes for spoiled or defective ballots, original ballots, voter assist terminal ballots, absent voter envelope for absent voter to election day conversion. Um, one helpful tip, any ballot envelope that may include a ballot should be included in the blue ballot container. Does that make sense? Any voted ballot or any ballot envelope that may include a ballot should be returned in the blue ballot container with the exception of the provisional ballot envelope. Complete the ballot container certificate. Um, two inspectors from different political parties will sign this. Um, the seal is recorded on the last page of the poll book. You will then seal the blue ballot container. The whole entire team did a phenomenal job, and I'm so thankful to have everybody be a part of this process. We're really looking forward to an outstanding election for August 6th. It's going to be great. We just want to wrap up with a few things that we want to show you in your precinct for Election Day. These kits come to you. It has all your supplies in it. Notice that they're neatly placed within the bins, and we'd like you to put your stuff back in these bins. The gentleman, Kevin, that was out there has meticulously put everything in place for you. Notice that the secrecy sleeves are beautiful, right? They're not wrinkled, they're not torn, but they are expensive. So he tries to get those all put together on the bottom of the box so that they don't come back all mangled. And every single one of these has the instructions. So we've turned it around for you to be able to see the instructions and we want to make sure that each one of these is the ballot marking instruction for the primary election. This tells the voter how to vote their ballot. I know that when Kevin was talking to you, he said, stay in your lane. The voters need to vote in one, one party section or another, and this specifically tells them how to accomplish that. We don't generally say vote in the Democrat section, vote in the Republican section, because you would be promoting that party. We say pick your party, stay in your lane, and that way their ballot will tabulate properly when they feed it through the tabulation system. These are pretty cool. Melissa's going to get them started around just so you can see them up front. We'll go half the room here and half over there. And those are the seals. We don't want you to cut seals, right? Everything has been sealed on purpose. If you start cutting off the seals, then it pretty much invalidates the 
equipment and we have to get new equipment out for you. The only seal that you will probably remove with your chairman's direction is that seal that might be on the front when your equipment is delivered of that ballot box. Leave the seal on the back. There's no reason to take it off, but we need you to look inside that ballot box and determine that there's no um, ballots in there. We have them cleared out, but we like you to take that step. We're required to have an American flag, which we're very proud to display. So get that in a prominent place in your precinct. It's wonderful to have our American flag as people are coming in. We want you, one of the first things that we need you to do is to mark off 100 feet. These are like fishing poles. It just gives you 100 feet. You're going to reel them in. You all are familiar with our no electioning beyond this point, right? But we wanted to get another layer of the ability for people to know that campaigning point. So if you have a large precinct, you can move this out a little bit, stick it in the ground. We found on windy days these were toppling over, but this is a new feature. We want you to use both. This is so handy, and it helps people know where they need to go if they're in the wrong precinct. They just need to scan that QR code. The directions will come up for them. They'll be able to pick their precinct and get where they need to go. Most people know where they should be, but we did have to change some precincts, particularly Precinct 1, which was in St. Joe's. We had a temporary move that didn't fit so well at the Community of Christ Church, and now we've moved them over to the Lake Grand Administration Office. So there might be a little bit of confusion about where they, those Precinct 1 voters vote. Who's my Precinct Chair in 1? I'm apologizing in advance. <laughs> um, you also have your ballot, which gives you front and back. We want people to know what was on the ballot while they're waiting in the line, which moves pretty quickly. They'll be able to see what's on the ballot. All of the precincts have a different ballot style because the delegates are on this precinct ballot, are on this election, and every single precinct has different delegates. Do we have any delegates running in the room? If we do, you can't be at the precinct where your name appears on that ballot. We love to have you work in the election, but do remind us that my name's on that ballot. Please assign me not in my own precinct. And we are carefully checking that as well against those ballots. But it's helpful when you also let us know that. Marking instructions. We all want to mark our ballots and make sure that they know that. If you need people to see this and go back over this, you can. But do be sure that people are viewing this and answer questions as you can. So get familiar with what's on here. All the precincts are listed as well as election day voter information. These are nice. How many of you remember the blue bags that you had to carry? It took two people to lift them. I know I have some chairmen, especially in a busy election, they were super heavy. So Melissa got us some on wheels. She's very kind. And you could, I think, carry a whole family in one of these. So <laughs> they're nice. They're much easier to get around in. So use your ballot bags. Make sure they're sealed properly. Perhaps you don't know how to seal it. Have someone show you how to do it when they're sealing up the ballots on election day. The best thing we can possibly do is make sure everything gets back in this box and then you cover this box back up again because the men that are coming on Wednesday, the day after the election, to pick up all this equipment, they are running to try to get to 15 precincts. And we might have a contest to see whose box looks the best at the end of all of this. So I appreciate all of you. You're doing a fantastic job. This concludes the training. If you have questions, come on up to the front. Everybody else is free to leave. Thank you. Thank you.